for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff with the Mad Shoes, as always. Got another full breakdown video for you guys today. If you guys don't know, every single month I try to put out a full free ebook on my YouTube, which is typically something you only get through my Patreon or through my website, madmoneyshot.com. This is just the video version, but at the end of the day, it's meant to show you guys what you get if you get the uh, the full ebooks throughout the season. If you get, they typically they have clickable links that take you right to an individual play. You get written setups, all that stuff, written descriptions on what defenses these plays beat and stuff like that. So obviously the ebooks are better than these free versions. But at the end of the day, this is for people that don't buy my ebooks and still support my channel. So as always, if you guys want me to continue this series, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. It really helps out the video. And if you guys want to see your favorite offense next month, because I'm going to keep doing this all the way through to Madden 24 and beyond, just let me know in the comment section what team, offense, or defense you would like to see me put out next. Other than that, let's get right into the video. Next up, we have the counter Y. It's just a good run play. Uh, most people will expect inside zones, but this run play going in the opposite direction should throw your opponent's user off quite a bit. And it's a pretty effective run. I mean, here we have, uh, you know, the pulling blocking just works out really well. It's a good 5 to 10 yard run every single time. And it's something that's just good to have uh, when most people try to shoot gaps for inside zones. That look like a run commit or something. But when most people try to shoot gaps for the inside zone, you can really just take it the other way. You can see the blocking is pretty successful and, and it's pretty consistent. Next up, we have the deep corner. This is a, we'll start off with Tampa 2. All you gotta do is put the B route on a streak, and the RB route is a really good uh, cover 2 play. At least that's one option. You could also streak the RB route, just make sure you run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field, put the X route and a 10 yard out route one more time. And the B route here kind of comes off in like a little bit of a delay, but he could still get inside the cover 2 safety for a big play, including a one play touchdown if you time it correctly. We'll go ahead and we'll pick that play again. This time we'll pick. Tampa 2, cover 2 man I mean, the RB route is a really good man beating route, that's really the only thing I wanted to show, it doesn't really matter what the man coverage is, the RB route is going to be one of the better man beating routes in the game. Next up we have the mesh, it's another play that can really get open against a lot of different things, all these drag routes are very good um, against man coverages and most zones, it's really a good short yards play. Things like this are good around the around the red zone and stuff like that. Except we have the bunch trail. It's a good man beating concept. Pretty much everything on this play beats man coverage. Uh, the B route here is probably the most successful as far as a deep route, but they all are man beaters. Next up we have the verticals. Start off with cover two. Against cover two, just put the RB route on a streak. And then motion out the B route. You can put the A route on an out route or you can put the X route a drag. I mean, I put him on an out route and then put the X route on a slant for a check down. But at the end of the day, I mean, I'm really just trying to, to isolate this wheel route outside here for a big catch and run. The tight end was open over the middle too. They both get open against cover two. Well, that's not even a tight end. It's Quez Watkins now, so even better. But the A route's a pretty good check down. As you can see, he's open underneath. I mean, I could take that. I mean, it's, it, everything's open here. You know, I mean, cover two's not a very good defense right now in Madden 22, but it's really easy to attack outside like this. Let's go ahead and let's hit the, uh, the Quez route real quick because it is there. As long as I can body that, you can see right there. I mean, it's, it's not as open as the outside routes are, though. Has a similar effect against cover two, man. Do the exact same setup. And you'll see he just runs around the potential jam. Although the um, the tight end was open too again. I mean, I was watching the tight end when I threw that ball. But you can see everybody's open the same way. Against cover three. It's not as good. But if you motion this out, a lot of times the, uh, the A route will just get open right at the seam. That's probably the best thing you can get out of cover three out of this right now. You can put the X route here on a comeback once again and put the uh, the A route on a streak and the B route on a drag, similar to another play that I put out. And the RB route should get open across the field again, although I don't know why I didn't catch that. I guess it was just a bad throw. I mean, I said good accuracy. We'll do that again. 
and we'll get uh, we'll get that playoff at some point. Why is he not catching this? Well, you can see it's gone. Do it one more time. Just because if it lets me. Let's go do this one more time. Like I said, that, that RB route is just streaking. I don't know why I didn't catch any of those. Next up we're gonna do cover four. Exact same setup. Should be the exact same results, although this takes a little bit longer. Because you gotta wait for this guy to pass. It's to the point too when I get that pass lead that I might not actually be able to catch it in bounds. But we'll do that again. So just wait till he crosses that safety and then boom, there we go. That'll be it. If he catches it, yeah, there we go. So we got easy one play touchdown against Cover 4 regular as well. Next up we got the branch return. Against pretty much any defense, you can just put the B route on a streak and then the A route on a flat. And you can really work the flat and the uh, the RB route concept together. If it's a man coverage, the flat route won't work. But if it's a zone coverage, it'll typically get open underneath any of them. Against cover three, against cover three, put the B route on a streak. Motion out. You put your running back on a route and then motion them to the line. Then put the X route on a streak. And this is pretty much going to be the play. The B route will get forgotten uh, at some point by the cornerback. And then you can bullet and pass lead up the field for a very big play. If you streak the A route and the B route, the RB route will get open against just about any defense, man or zone. Um, as you can see right there, they're going to completely disregard him in the uh, in the uh, the shorter route because everything's going to get pulled back by the double streaks. As you can see right here, he has to react to that, or else you know there's a chance that he get beat for a one play touchdown. So very big play. Next up, we have the Z spot. It's another play that can work against just about any zone coverage. The B route here, I'd put on like a slanting check down. But at the end of the day, if it's a zone coverage, I'm reading the A route first. If it's there, I'll take it. If it's not there, typically the B route will be open above it. I'm sorry, the RB route since I'm on this side. But ultimately, it's going to be the same thing. Here we got a man coverage. Like I said, I wait for that RB route to get open. And it looked like he had position, but we still got that over the top. So man or zone, that route should get open against just about anything except for cover four. Next up, we have the middle high low. Start off with cover two. I'm going to motion this guy in and put him on a streak. I'm going to put the A route on a drag. That's pretty much it. The Y route is going to be the read as he's pretty much going to get around that cover two cornerback. Although there he got bumped a little bit. Still made the play. Uh, might have to wait a little bit longer before making that throw. You can always motion across the tight end too. So that you can leave that uh, that drag out there doing what he's doing. And then that will also create this guy getting open um, over the drag. So the drag can actually help against cover two. There's two ways to run it. Next up we have the wide corner. This play here, you just got to motion in the X route. Put him on a streak and then put the A route on the drag. You can do anything you want with the other routes. But the Y route should get outside of just about any manner zone. As you can see right there, that's pretty much... I don't even know what it is. It doesn't matter. This route will beat just about anything. They look like a man coverage. I tried on everything, including cover four. It worked the exact same way on all the defenses. You can see here, just as long as you wait for that guy to get outside the cornerback, bullet and pass it away, he'll beat every single defense in the game. Next up, we'll pick the escape. Start off with Tampa 2. The running back really gets open against any defense, man or zone. It's a really good check down. It's, you could throw it at different times, even if it's man coverage. You could throw it at uh, when he's coming in the break or when he's leaving the break. Like I said, I could throw it there, just treat it like a, like a, like a circle route, or I could wait till he's going outside. This is not man coverage. It's cover two, but at the same time, it's still successful. So we'll go ahead and move the ball over. Like I said, this beats anything. So I'm going to motion this guy in, put him on a streak, block the tight end. And you really put the B route on a slant or a drag. It really doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, I'm shooting for that Y route, which you can see is a very big play against cover two. Could easily get a catch and run for a one-play touchdown if I get a better, uh, better throw. You can streak the tight end also, though, and the B route. We'll get up the the cover two uh, safeties pretty quickly. Although I didn't get a good catch and run there, but you can see how that also works 
I'll do that one more time. As he just kind of cuts right in front of that safety. And then if I get a better bullet and pass lead, you can see I can catch and run that for an easy one play touchdown because the corner route really splits the safeties on the other side. Next up, I'll do cover two man. Pretty much the same setup applies. Show you that running back route. Like I said, he just gets open against anything. You really can throw it at just about any time, too, as he gets open again. Same setup. Otherwise, the B route gets that free inside release. And you can really get over the top for another big play. Although there, threw it a little bit early. But you can see how it beats that the same way. It doesn't get jammed. Because he's starting so close to the line, he doesn't really get jammed. Which means that he really can just run right past these defenders. Although I'm not quite getting the best catch and run after. But you can see it's a one-play touchdown capable play. Next up, we'll do cover three. You can streak all your receivers and motion this guy in. Although this guy would want to put on a fade. Put the B route on a fade too, to be honest, just to pull this defense out away as far as possible. And then you can see how this can really be an easy one-play touchdown over the top. Although not quite getting good catch and runs. Definitely want to run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field as well. Block my running back because I'm not really going for the check down here. And you can see how we can get that play although like i said i don't have a fat might not have a fast enough receiver or strong enough throw power quarterback but you can see you have a one play touchdown opportunity over the top the b route could score also we'll put the a route on a streak block the running back put the y route on an out route and the x route on a comeback route and you'll see how the b route here can get past the safety although i don't know why that was a little bit overthrown i'm gonna do that one more time so I can actually complete this pass. And for whatever reason, I get a bad throw, under pressure throw. But you can see it does get over the top of the cornerback and pass the safety. Do that again. Make sure I get enough pass protection. And like I said, we're, we're not quite getting the, uh, the pass pro. We're getting a lot under pressures. But you can see it does score against cover three. Next up, we'll choose cover one going to be the exact same setup for the most part I'll show you how this running back gets open once again I actually threw that kind of early there but you can see the running back gets open against everything next up we have cover four quarters it's a good cover four quarters play just put the X route on a comeback and the B route here uh, will be a very good play if not a one play touchdown if I had Quez Watkins running that it would be easily a one play touchdown just streak the A route Put the running back on a wheel route and see what that does as i'm going to require a little bit more time but you can see it does hesitate that defender a little bit to help him get open a little bit more and the, and the tight end can be the key tight end can be the read next up we'll pick cover for regular cover for drop put the x route on a comeback and then smart route and then put the y route on a smart route as well Motion this guy in and put the A route on a streak. And you'll see how you can really flatten the depths of those deeper safeties and get a very big play right between the safeties once he skits inside the strong safety. You don't have to make that motion either. I mean, honestly, you could leave him out there and it'll work fine. Because you can see that it's like once he splits those safeties, it's still pulling apart the safeties. And if you have a fast enough uh receiver in that spot like if i had walkins in that spot you could easily get gone i i smart route the wire out here because like i said i'm just trying to bring that safety down as much as possible and like i said i don't know if i have a fast enough receiver but this can be a one play touchdown with a really fast receiver looks like we have the inside zone it's just the best run plan information it's gonna be best used against cover two man in zone because the safety drop back but anytime your opponent gets too pass heavy on defense or leaves too big of a gap, you can just basically hit him with this. It's the best run play in the formation. Next up, we have the mesh spot. If your opponent follows the drags, a lot of time the B route here can really be the play in the middle of the field, but the computer's not really going to do that. So you saw there, that actually was a man coverage. It did beat that. But this play is really all about the drags. And if your opponent user follows one of the drags, then the route in the middle of the field gets open. That's pretty much the setup. Next up, we got the Y sail. This play here, put the Y route on a zig to be a man beater. And on the right side, the running back will beat pretty much any zone, while the zig will beat pretty much any man on the other side. You do have a deeper option. 
pretty much both routes on the left side will be your be your man um, your man beaters because the X will be man too. But you have a deeper option in the tight end. As you can see here, we got a cover three. The streak pulls back the cornerback. If it's a cover two, we'll get open outside on top of the cornerback. So the streak will really pull back the coverage, and the A route really should be just about any defense. It can also be man coverage too as they get sacked. But the A route is also a decent man beating route. Let's see if we can get a man coverage here. As you can see, we're getting that cover three once again. Like I said, that tight end is going to be there pretty much the entire time. And that's my backup tight end once again as I keep forgetting to replace them. Do you have a one-play touchdown option in the cover two from this? I want to run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field. The tight end does a really good job of getting outside of cover two already without any adjustments, although there he's kind of slow to get to that because he's not a very good tight end. But he will, if you have a better tight end, a faster tight end, he will get there. But ultimately, it's better to put him on a streak anyway and let the B route get outside with a good bullet and pass. As you can see, the, uh, the safety has to wait for the tight end to come across um, to really, it basically just lets him get over the top. Next up, we got the fake jet pass power. You need a mobile quarterback for this, but if you have one, this is a very good run play. As you can see, you have a lot of additional blockers. Now, Jalen Hurts is one of the faster quarterbacks in the game, but I probably don't want to try to go outside that much unless I have, like, a Lamar Jackson, as you can see right here. I mean, there is definitely space to have if those blocks get cut off. But you're really watching the safeties and the linebackers in the hole to decide whether to just take it inside or not because they can get caught up in the trash. Like I said, right there, 25. That guy there, he's pretty much the guy that I'm watching if I want to go inside or outside. So there, if he gets caught up, I can go outside. That linebacker in that direction uh, of, of travel, he's right there. He doesn't get caught up, he's going to catch me up. And then we also have a fumble because a lot of quarterbacks do tend to fumble. So that's something. This play can be an explosive play, but like I said, I'd really keep it if you to use it if you have like an elite speed quarterback, which Hurts is just under. As you can see, there he gets caught up, and we get a big run. I mean, it's a it's a pretty consistent run. It's a fun run if you like to run with your quarterback, which a lot of people do. But uh, there are some downsides, like like you know runs for losses and, and potential fumbles. Uh, but I think the potential fumbles only really happen if you turn your back. I don't really think it's going to happen if you're running straight ahead and hitting the uh, the the R1 button. To, to hold on to the ball. Next up, we have the inside zone. All right, so this is just a good inside run. It's a bread and butter run. You have a lot of really good trick play runs to the outside, but this is gonna be the one you probably use the most to set up those, those type of outside runs. So good inside run to go with the outside runs. We also have the jet touch pass. Make sure you have your fastest receiver in the receiving spot here. This here is going to be best against like cover threes and you know, even man coverage. As you can see right there, the tight end does a pretty good job of getting out on that block. You're making noises, Jace. This is going to be best against man coverages, a cover three, cover four with the cornerbacks drop back. Uh, but you can see, I mean, this doesn't necessarily go outside. The tight ends will, will stretch out, which means sometimes you have to break it off inside, making this a, a, an optional run to go inside or outside. Here, I'm going to go outside. You can see how the running back does a good job of catching that guy up. And we have a really good uh, series of run plays between this and the quarterback version. Except by the split close, we've got the read option again. You just read that read defender one more time. If he drops back, you got to hand it off. Um, if he if he is aggressive and attacks the running back, you got to keep with the quarterback. Although in reality, even if he does that, you're running away from him. So you really can still hand it off. He's not necessarily going to make the bigger play. But the reason you don't want to do that is because you're going to get a bigger run with the quarterback if he drops down. I'm going to go ahead and run this until he drops down. Because that really is the bigger play of the two, is when he's aggressive. He just got the back door with the quarterback. Although Isaiah Simmons is going to catch me because he's one of the fastest linebackers in the game. But still, that's going to be your best option. Next up, we have the fullback inside. This is just a good run in the opposite direction. It's not actually a fullback running it, but you already have the buck sweep going in one direction. This just goes in the opposite direction, completing the uh, the ability to run in both directions. So you don't want to run it when you have something like this. You typically want to switch over to the cross buck or vice versa, because here you can see there's a defender just waiting in that hole. It's going to be a little more difficult to get through that. So it's really all about reading the defense and choosing which run play is best based off of the direction. Like here, probably have a little more success with this. Uh, although ultimately, like I said, we're looking for an advantage, which we're not really getting with these two defenses of looks uh, but when you have one you can see how explosive a run can be next up we got the halfback slip screen 
If your opponent starts blitzing too much, this is a good play. The RB route's good against zone, uh, but this is really going to be all about the screens. You can see right there, we just get it out in space. Uh, that's probably going to be your best bet against man. That looked like a man coverage there. So if it's a zone coverage, you do have the ability to hit the RB route. Um, which like right here I have so I don't have to force it to that uh, to that underneath to the to the screenplay I do have a second option if the if the users there or if the blockers don't pull out or something like that Which happens a lot so plays like this I can deal with I'm not really a, a huge fan of screen plays because I don't if, if I have to force it to the screen I don't like the screenplay this play has a very good secondary option it just has to be against his own coverage Although at the end of the day the best play is still going to be to the screen option uh, Just as long as your blockers set up. I mean a lot of weird things can happen in Madden as I didn't really run very well after the catch but you can see the screen sets up very well as well next up we get the PAF slide this play here all I'm gonna do is block the running back and put the B route on a 10 yard out route that can really be just about any defense I'm pretty much gonna read this play from the A route back to the RB route then back to the B route the X route should be just about anything especially man coverage the A route is the only thing that beats the zone and zone only uh, but all these other routes here are man beaters so you can really just take your pick and like I said work your way from the running back back to the slot receiver back to the in route the in route will be last by the time you get to the in route pretty much everything will be cleared on the middle because that's pretty much just how the play is you can see right here that that route right there probably want a better receiver running that's like my fourth best receiver running it for some reason but you can see how successful that is against man coverage you just want to have one additional blocker otherwise you might run into trouble here we go get that check down underneath the zone get to my running back try to make a move in space that's the only time you can throw to that guy it's against zone coverages but you're really going to end up throwing to the rb route and the b route the most next up we have the backs cross this is really good man being played pretty much every route here beats man so I would say it's best against man cover one. The crossing backs is really hard for um, for really anybody to cover. It's almost like a double drag setup just with the running backs crossing each other. They both really work well and they both get open. As you can see, neither one of them is getting covered. That's pretty much the bread and butter for this play. I would say since you have two short routes, the best move would be to put the A route on a slant. Uh, maybe even the B route on a slant since you have a lot of good man being options Although the B route is a good man being option. It's just uh, it just takes a little bit long And I think that by the time you would see the success from that you'd probably be getting pressure from the line But a very good play next up. We got the halfback gut just a good inside run going in the opposite direction. So you have your fullback run going one way, this run's going the opposite way, and that's really what makes this formation so good to run out of is the um, is how hard it is to predict in which way you're going to go, and you can really have success in either direction. Next up, we have the bench. You can run this play just like this, but to me it's best to just set it up the same way I've shown a couple plays from this book by putting the X route on a streak and by putting the A or the B route on a drag. I'd say putting the B route on the drag makes the most sense. Uh, this is pretty much going to be the look. Your Y route is going to be just about any defense, especially this man coverage, which we're starting off with. So you can see how man or zone, that's going to be a very good route. You can go the other way though. If you if you think your opponent is using that side, you can just basically do the exact same thing on the other side. The drag is going to be there all the time. It's just a very good check down uh, with the crossing uh, drag route. And you could also set up some very explosive plays. Like right here, it looks like we have that man coverage one more time. Just another really good play. It's going to beat cover two, cover three, all that. I don't know if we might have a cover three here. We might have another man coverage as well. I'm not really sure, but we'll go ahead and we'll run it once it lets me run it. Looks like we're going to have a zone coverage this time. You can see once again, this guy beats it outside. That was a cover three. I got a bad throw, but you can see how that's going to get outside just about any zone coverage. It could be a very big play against cover three the same way the previous play was by streaking these outside receivers. Eventually, this X route here will be open once the cornerback fades away for easy bullet and pass lead away. You probably need a, an extreme speed advantage for this to work, but you'll see that once he f f basically covers that cross or just bullet pass lead away from the safety and number 11 here, whoever's in your slot position or this receiver position should have space from the safety. Probably is the same way with the tight end, but I, I don't you know, typically go that route. Next up, we got the mesh spot. This play here is really all about the drags. 
Uh, if the drags are covered, a lot of times um, the, the, the comeback route, the little mini hook route over the center of the field will be open, especially if a user middle linebacker leaves the center chasing the drags. That will a lot of times leave this guy just wide open, although against the computer probably won't happen as much. But I typically try to roll in the direction of the running back because that's really my reach. This is going to be the, uh, the X route there, which I try to throw to even though I was talking and I didn't get it off. Uh, or the B route, which is going to be the comeback route that kind of just sits in the zone. Or if the third option, a lot of times, is going to be taken off with the quarterback if you have a fast quarterback. So that's really going to be the three reads. Next up, we have the Saints drive out. Start off with Tampa 2. This is very similar to another play that I put out from this formation where all you have to do is streak the X route and the Y route will get open against just about any defense in the game. Uh, as you can see right there, it gets outside of the cover 2. Now we'll pick cover two man. Against cover two man, you'll have to streak that uh, that X route again as the Y route here will get outside of it. You can see here, this might actually be a one play touchdown. He got behind the safety. So like I said, very explosive play. Can also have success against cover three. Against cover three, just put the A route and the B route on streaks. Block your running back, motion out the X route and put him on a curl. Or a comeback, I'm sorry, a comeback. And watch how this Y route completely cooks the entire hemisphere of this field. And we're getting a very easy one play touchdown. So against cover three, that's especially deadly. Next up, we'll do cover one hole. So all I have to do is put the A route or the B route on a streak. It really doesn't matter. Uh, motion this guy out here again if I want. I don't have to motion him out, to be honest with you. But it does make the, uh, the man defender in front of the Y route a little bit further away. And it just to me, it makes the play a little bit better. But you can see, I mean, it's cover one man covers us better than most uh, defenses. I can do the streak as well, but I find that sometimes it helps, sometimes it hurts. Here you can see it helps to get my man free, but sometimes it'll get in the way and my guy won't get free. So it's really up to you. Next up we have cover four regular, which is right here. I'm gonna do the same setup. Just put everybody on streaks and then move this guy out. Put him on a comeback or a, come, or a comeback route. So I really got to do Y route's going to cook this safety again. Although Aguilar's not a very good route runner, it doesn't really seem to matter as he's, um, you know, he's just kind of rounding that off and not really running it clean. But it's still an easy one play touchdown. Next up, we have the dagger. This play here, all I got to do is put the A route on a streak, put the Y route on a drag, you can motion across uh, Smith here and put him on a slant. And the running back's actually fine. I can leave him doing what he's doing. The, the drag gets open to 5 to 0, the crossing route gets open to 20 to 25, and the X route slant gets open about 10 to 15. So I pretty much have anything regardless of how my zone drop opponents like to set zone drops. Uh, the running back is a really good check down too, the check and release, not a lot of people really check that. The running back's a really good route, but there's a lot of good routes in this play. So it looks like we have a man coverage because we have somebody following here. That's going to really, I mean, all these routes beat man and zone. That's part of the, the really good part about it, except for the running back. That's one time where you're not going to see the running back work. There, though, I try to catch and run and play work out almost i mean i caught the ball still though which is the most important part but like i said everything here beats uh man and zone so i really don't have any concerns i'm just going to work my way from front to back running back to drag to crosser and if that's not there i have that slant option as a uh, as pretty much like an emergency option so there we go once again crossing route will be open although i got a bad throw you can see he was beating his coverage drag route was open too i probably could have took that a lot easier but i was going for the bigger play but this is a very good play against any type of defense Next up, out of the tray wide flex, we have the inside zone. Just the best run play in the formation. Once again, I mean, you're going to get a lot of opportunities, whether it's man or zone. The receiver typically takes out the linebacker. If the, like right here, he's spread out wide because he's probably a man coverage over that guy. That basically gives me a lane. If he's in the lane, a lot of times the receiver will come in and take him out of the play. Right here, though, this is not really the best look because there's probably not anybody that's going to really pick up on that. That would not be a good look. But it's really a one-on-one. -on -one. You really just want to make sure that wherever that linebacker is, that that receiver has has a clear path to him. That's really what's going to create your running space. So here you see he's out over the receiver. That'll give me an option. And I, uh, you know, just a nice big hole. And if he's in the hole, a lot of times the receiver will come out and basically take him out of the play. Next up, we have the PA crossers. So this player here, I'm going to do is motion this guy out, put him on a 10-yard out route, put the B route here on a fade. That's all I really got to do. Cancel the play action. The Y route is going to be the play. Just can't let him get too far across the field. You can see he's going for a one-play touchdown. That was actually a little bit too far, but once he gets to the center, I pretty much bullet and pass lead up. Also has success against cover two man. I don't really think you have to put the put Goddard on a speed. Or you could probably leave him on the speed out because it's about the same 10-yard route. 
but we got to put them out, move motion them out there. You see here the, the B route gets open right over the middle once again. Might not be a one play touchdown against cover two man, but it's definitely going to be a big play. Then against cover three, against cover three, you got to make that motion, but you got to put them on a comeback route. They're going to put the B route on, on a, not a, a streak or a fade. It doesn't really matter. But the Y route, once again, will be the read. Once he gets across the safety there, and you can see I don't get a good throw, but he definitely has his space. Against cover three, you got to make that same motion, but you got to put him on a comeback route or, a, you know, whatever. Then put the B route on a fade, and you should have a very good cover three one-play touchdown. Once the, the this route here gets across, once again, the Y route, you can see he was very wide open as the cover three cornerback is covering the actual uh, comeback route. Same setup works against cover four. We'll go ahead and we'll pick cover four. And it's going to work the same way. Typically, cover four, you have to run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field. But we'll go ahead and we'll try this one time. It's just so it doesn't take as long to cross the field. But you can see it still worked from this side. But from the hash mark to the short side of the field, it might work even better. Except we got man cover one. This year, just put the B route on a fade. That's all you really got to do. The Y route's going to get open uh, for an easy one-play touchdown. You could put the tight end on a drag or any number of things. But you can see this is a very easy one play touchdown against cover one as well. Next up we have the RPO alert screen. The A route's a man beater. For cover three, you really just want to throw it over here. You got good blocking. You'll get a good catch and run. Just have your fastest receiver in that spot if you're going to run this. If you have a lot of holes in the middle of the field, though, just hand it off. I mean, if you have a lane, it's best to just take that lane. But cover three or cover four, you want to throw it to the X route. Next up we have the shock H option. This play here, I'm just going to motion across the X route, which is something I'll do quite a bit. Uh, then I'll put the B route here on a streak. I can put the A route on a streak, the X route on a drag, or the A route on a drag, and, and the X route on a slant. It doesn't really matter, but ultimately motioning that guy across is really what makes the most important part of this play. And then you can see this guy here is just angling away from where the, uh, the cornerback and the safety are going to be able to cover. Didn't get a very good pass there, which isn't necessarily a surprise. This is kind of how Jalen Hurts does, but let's do that one more time. So it's kind of my fault. Maybe I didn't really throw it on timing. You can see right there. I can throw it a lot earlier and get a good catch and run because ultimately, you know, you got to account for the sidelines. It's best to run from the hash mark to the open side of the field, too. Also has a lot of success against cover two man. Same setup. Get all of our check downs in order. And you can see the wire out there. He's already got outside leverage. He's going to just blow right past this guy. And we could get another very big catch and run. A possible one play touchdown if you get a good enough catch and run. Can have success against cover three as well. Same setup. Although this time you want to have the A route on a streak. Maybe even the X route on a streak. You can pretty much streak everybody on this play. Because I'm just trying to basically get this, uh, split this field. And there you can see it's just basically a, a, a nice seam beating play to the cover three. Ready, ready. Hurt, hurt. If I put him on a fade, it's a little bit better. If everybody else is on a streak, but the B route on a fade will get him a little bit more, um, you know, leading room away from that safety. So that's probably a little bit better than the streak. Next up, we got the verticals. Gonna pick cover one. B route beats cover one very easily. Once he makes that second break, just bullet and pass it away. Make sure you get a little bit of a better uh, pass than I just threw. You block the running back. I don't find it's really necessary though because the pass rush doesn't really get home. And I don't know why I'm slightly out throwing my guy, but you can see he is getting separation. So let's block the running back. Maybe I'll be a little bit less worried about getting the ball out on time. As you can see here, we finally get that completion. Like I said, when he makes that second break, he's just wide open against cover one. Next up, we have the halfback counter. This play here, it's just a good counter run. A lot of run plays in uh, formations like this only go in one direction. So it's good to have a run that can go in the opposite direction. As you can see right there, I really had to sprint outside to make it do. 
but uh, you can also go right up the middle. It really just depends on you know what you're seeing in front of you. It's a good run play. It's just something that um, is good at keeping your opponent you know fr from just expecting inside zones all the time, as this can have success in a different direction than what is typical. But like this formation here, I'd switch over to the quick base because obviously there's multiple defenders here, and I'm just setting myself up to fail to try to run into that. So if your opponent's shifting all of their men towards the more probable inside zone type runs take it outside and go the opposite direction for a very big carry as you can see the biggest runs i had was sprinting completely away from the inside all the way out and around any uh you know defenders right in front of me except we have the inside zone just your best run play in this formation as it'll typically the receivers will spread the uh or the linebackers apart enough that you can have a big play like right here they're covering he's covering pascal so it's just a big lane and i should be able to you know, take that advantage to get a pretty relatively consistent run play from this. Next up we got the PA counter go. This is another man coverage play. This play here has three routes that beat man. The X route's really just pulling coverage back. The Y route's probably the best because it's gonna be your most explosive receiver. The tight end is also very good though. This is a very similar route. So you could really throw to these routes all game until your opponent tries to drop on them. You can see right there, I mean, even with the cornerback trying to cut in front of it, I still have inside leverage, so I can still take that away. Although that route really can do a better job uh, than it did there uh, because, you know, I'm in front of it, so I can always come back to the ball. But it can get outside of it if you have a, bit, a little bit of a faster tight end or if the cornerback is playing inside. And then once your user starts covering those, the B route here really can be a good play. Although there, I just had a guy come scream right off the edge, so I'm gonna have to run that again. But this uh, this B route is a good man beater, so let's go and let's do that one more time. Like I said, just waiting for this guy. I don't know who's blocking, but you can see how that beats man coverage too. So I have three routes that beat man coverage on three different portions of the field. Next up, we have the RPO zone alert bubble. It's a good inside run, especially against like cover two, uh, man and zone because the safety drop back. But you really just want to watch the receiver and the, really want to watch the cornerback in front of the receiver because that's really going to dictate what you do. If he follows, you have to hand it off no matter what because otherwise you're probably going to throw a pick six. So I'm really just going to watch the B route. If he follows like he has on the first two plays, I'm just going to take what I can on the run. I'm getting a pretty good run. I'm getting about five yards. But at the end of the day, I really would like to throw to this guy. As you can see here, there's much more space outside. I mean, they're both good. That's there. I get closer to 10. But at the end of the day, there's plenty of opportunity to this guy. There's nobody even in front of him here, so that's going to be an even easier read. If there's no cornerback there, I mean, you can definitely take that. But that might have been a man blitz zero where the safety was responsible. It's really hard to tell. Here's another play. Like I said, he doesn't react. I'll take it outside. It's really up to you where you want to go. But uh, it's a good run play. There's opportunity in two different directions. Next up, we'll pick the verticals. This is a cover one and a cover two man play. No real adjustments needed. This B route just destroys cover one man once he breaks the second time. Uh, I don't know why I didn't catch that, but you can see he got wide open. That's really the most important part. We'll go and do that again. Like I said, no adjustments covers or cover one play once he he just it just you know breaks in front of that and uh, in front of that uh, cornerback i'm not sure why that has that reaction but it's just programmed to do that it's a very good play also has a lot of success against cover two we'll go and we'll pick that against cover two man motion this guy across and the y route will get separation that he wouldn't have gotten otherwise i'm gonna put the b route on a fade and i'm gonna block my tight end put the x route on a 10 yard out route and you'll see how the Y route really gets around the jam, which is something that he wouldn't have done otherwise as we can get a very big play against cover two man, although I safe caught that instead of rack caught that. Like I said, I'll do that one time without that, and you'll notice that he gets jammed and rode all the way across the field to the point where he's not really too viable of an option. So this is something that you only really get when you motion this guy across. <clears throat> so motion him across, fade the B route, put the X route on a 10 yard out route, block the tight end gonna go ahead and do this one more time and like i said you'll see how he just gets around that jam he just just completely breaks it and then at that point you're just basically just hitting a home run although i don't know why i didn't catch it but you saw i caught the one previously so very easy play against cover two man next up we'll choose cover two for cover two just motion this guy out put him on a 10 yard out route and that's all you really got to do the rb route should split the safeties pretty easily um, without making, I mean, you could also put the B route on a streak or a fade, which is going to be helpful to keep that safety home. So this will be the look here. The A route's a really good man beater too, really good man check down. But like I said, if you streak that B route, that just makes this that much easier when it comes to beating uh, the safety, splitting the safeties.
Next up, we'll choose cover to man. Although I already messed up, uh, but I, by messing up the RB or the uh, the check down tight end, but that's fine. So the RB route, like I said, just as long as he doesn't get pressed too crazy, you can see he can run right through the middle of those safeties again, whether it's cover two man or zone. And like I said, the A route is a good check down, so I'll go and I'll throw it to them one time. I don't even know who's supposed to be in coverage <laughs> there. He just ran right across. That that thing looks like a shot out of a cannon, so definitely a good check down. Go and do that one more time. Like I said, he's supposed to be covered by the A route, but he's just gone. I mean, that's like guy. He's just in full sprint. That's not even my starting tight end. That's my backup, as you can see. It's excellent man being checked down there. We'll go cover three. So you can run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field. Motion this guy. I'll put him on a comeback route. Block your running back. Put the A route on the street. Put the B route on the fade. And the RB route will do a good job. I'm going to go ahead and drop this guy back into coverage. He will do a good job. Um, just as long as you have time, like I said, he will get across, but you can see it does take a long time for him to get across. So that is a one-play touchdown against cover three. I know it's better to run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field and put the B route on a comeback, put the RB route on a fade, and fade the X route. Block the running back as well. And you'll notice, just as long as this RB route doesn't get jammed up too much, that he really can get right past the, uh, the cornerback because the cornerback kind of hesitates uh, when it comes to um, the deciding whether to cover the comeback route or the or the fade. So like I said, if we're watching this cornerback here, you can see that he, he gets indecisive. And when he does that, he loses all his acceleration. So Quez Watkins just runs right past him on the street. You probably need your fastest receiver here to do this, but it's very much it's a much easier one play touchdown. But you can do it both ways, so it really depends on what your opponent is looking for. You just need some time in the pocket for this route to get open as you can see we can't get across i didn't even get a very good pass lead either i would have wanted to pass lead that much further away but it can score both ways next up we'll do cover four quarters next up we have the drag wheel so if you run this from the hash mark to the open side of the field put the b route here in a curl you can see how it overlaps the the wheel route so a lot of times that curl will get in the way of the of the defender making this guy just get wide open. So that's something you're just basically watching to make sure that he does jam him off. And if he does if he does bump him off the coverage, then it's an easy one play touchdown. Next up we get the halfback power. This is a good outside run. Uh, it's gonna be best against like cover three, cover four because the cornerbacks drop back. So you do have a good inside outside run option. Uh, but this play here, I would say, if somebody's blitzing heavy, it wouldn't be a best. It would be best to just cut it off and take it inside. So you can run this outside, but it's also a good option for an inside run if you don't think it's there. Like right here, I got a good hole right here. I might as well just take that. Like it's it's risky to try to take it outside, but um, it's something that you can do because you do have the pulling blocker. I find it's best just to follow 69 though. That's your pulling guard. I think it's best to use him as your lead blocker. Except we have the inside zone. It's just a very good inside handoff run play. Nothing really too crazy. Um, it's just your bread and butter inside runs. The best run play inside in the entire formation. Next up, we get the mesh Y out. So I'm going to put the A route on a streak. And then pretty much your double drags and your Y route here can be a very good man-beating route. That wheel route's a very good play. If you have a linebacker matched up or you have a speed advantage, you can have a very big play with that against man coverage. But really, this play is all about the double drags. I don't think I really have to show how double drags work. But they uh, are very good man beaters and zone beaters at that match, for that matter. Play is also a really good play against cover zero. Just got to block the tight end. And the Y route here, once again, can't get over the top of a safety or whoever is in coverage as long as he has a good speed advantage. If, you're, uh, line, if your defense is in a press... A lot of times it'll, it'll uh, help out as well. As you can see, he's trying to press the defender un or the receiver going on a drag, which sometimes will do, sometimes you won't. The safety that's in coverage. If he gets caught in that in that press animation, which I'm going to do this one more time, that can be very helpful. You can see right there, he just, just runs right past it. So, you know, this is a very good man-beating play regardless whether he's in press or he's in regular man coverage. Except we have the slot out. So I'm going to motion across the tight end, put him on a streak. And the X route can be a very big play against cover two. It's going to let us do this. So we just have to wait for the X route to get um, even with the safety, then bullet and pass it outside and get over the top of the safety because the safety has a hard time flipping his hips to run with a fully sprinting receiver. 
Next up, we have the PAX Dig. We're gonna go ahead with uh, Overstorm Brave again. A lot of man beating routes here, uh, especially the X routes, good check down. But the B route here, because of this elongated inside release, is an easy one for the touchdown if your opponent is pressing. So we're just going to put the A route on a pattern so that this receiver doesn't get double teamed by the safety. Because if he's not on a pattern, you're going to see how that safety is going to get right in the way. And that's basically going to take away what I'm trying to do here. So, got to have that uh, tight end on the pattern. Doesn't really matter what pattern it is. You can put him on a drag route, which would be a much better check down. But like I said, if your opponent's in press, this B route here is going to be an easy one play touchdown over the top because he just runs right around that press. Now there I didn't get a good timing or good throw or anything like that, but it's still, you can see it just gets right past. So watching this, like I said, he goes right around the press. It gets inside release enough that the press doesn't, you know, have any real effect. So if you have your fastest guy here, it'd be even better, but you can see how that can easily get behind any cover zero defense in a press very quickly. Next up, we got the power O. This play here, I like to flip this. Uh, you can typically flip with the right stick in the left direction. You can typically motion this guy across too, especially if it's a zone coverage, it'll give you an additional blocker. Um, that can definitely be helpful. But this is like a trap play. If you flip it, you basically get like a trap run. And you can see how that extra receiver blocking really comes in handy. So you don't have to do that, especially if it's a man coverage, you wouldn't want to do that. But like I said, treating this like uh, you know, right here, we have our lead blocker, which is our, our guard coming across, and we get a very uh, easy run. Running this in the tight end direction, to me, isn't really the way to go. Like I said, right there, boom, I just run into a wall. So flipping this play, treating it like a counter run, um, really, to me, is the best way. And it's going to be best if run um, when your uh, defensive alignment is, is as spread as possible, trying to take away outside runs. Most people will think you're going to come out trying to do stretch runs in a formation like this anyway. So taking it inside in these gaps is a very good move. Next up, we got the stretch alert smoke. This here, if it's a cover three or cover four, you can throw it to the smoke. If it's a man coverage, you can't. Otherwise, you know, you got to hand it off. Pretty much every other defense, you're going to want to hand it off. Uh, stretch run's a good run. This is the only real stretch run that they have. So this is something that, I mean, against cover three, two, once again, the cornerback drop back. So this is a good outside run, uh, but the smoke is only good against cover three and cover four off zones, uh, which you can pretty much tell because the place, they start back so far. Like right there, I can just steal the five yards real quick doing that. That's even more, I got closer to 10 yards. It's more like eight yards. So if the cornerbacks start off like this, let's say you can just steal that right out there and just get a good uh, five to 10 yard catch and run. Next up, we got the 95 Willie. This is a good inside run. I mean, it's it's kind of like the power run or the power O run. Um, it's just a good uh, short side run. I wouldn't say there's really a lot of applications. Well, I'll flip it. I'm pretty much just going to run it as it's designed. Although there, I look like a run commit. Uh, we still got about five yards though. So, um, you know, this is uh, it's just one of the better run plays because the it, it's it's like a trap. You're really gonna you're really just gonna follow the guard. It's like a trap block. As you can see, we're getting 20 yards down the field with no problem with this run, no real adjustments. I just want to highlight how good this run is because you have two pulling blockers really. It feels like that anyway, with the pulling guard and with the, the fullback, um, the way that he gets outside. I mean, it's just it's just a really good trap block is how it feels. Next up, we have the fullback flare. Start off with cover two. All you have to do on this play is put the X route on a fade for cover two. And the corner route is gonna handle the safety. Just had a, you know, I could have passed like that up towards the middle a little bit better, but you could see how that's um, an easy one play touchdown against cover two. I'll do it again because, like I said, I waited way too long. The B route here, you know, right over the middle there. Now he's, now he's got like an easy 20 yard separation. So that's going to be the best route for that. You could also motion this guy across and put the A route on a streak and it'll have a similar effect. If you do this though, you're going to want to make sure you run it from a hash mark. Um, because that's going to be a little bit more effective. But once he gets past that cornerback, you can see he's just outside here in space. So you have two options when it comes to, to cover two. Next up, we'll pick cover two man. Same setup, just fade the X route. And the B route here can still get right over up the middle. I mean, obviously the man defender trailing makes a difference. Um, and how good of a jam he gets makes a difference as well. Um, but we'll go and do that one more time. Like I said, the B route here. You know, he's he's definitely got opportunity, but it's not necessarily going to be as big of a play depending on how well he gets off, how, how well he gets jammed, how well he gets pressed off his route and stuff like that. 
You can do that secondary setup as well, Stre motion him across, streaking the A route, and you'll notice that when the B route bends the corner, that he typically gets uh, a pretty good amount of separation from the cornerback, especially if you've got a, a fast receiver like this, which can easily be a one-play touchdown as well. Next up, we'll choose cover three. So I'm just going to block the running back, motion over the fullback, and put him on a wheel route. Then I'm going to put the X route on the comeback, put the B route on the fade. So all we got to do, runs from the hash mark to the open side of the field. It's going to be also kind of important. And you'll see how the B route here, because this cornerback has to react to the comeback route, will basically just get his feet crossed up and let this guy run straight past once he, passed, once he beats the jam. So here, once again, we're watching this cornerback here, who's going to get a little bit confused when he really has to choose between these two routes. You can see he turns to run, then he turns back to the comeback route, then he turns back to run again. At that point, he's running. He just lost all of his acceleration, so you can just bomb it up for a very easy one-play touchdown. I'll go ahead and do that again. You don't really have to do any of the other additional motions either. I mean, this will work just like this. As you can see, once again, I don't have to even motion out the tight end. He just gets right over the top. So that part's a little bit extra. But um, just as long as you run this from a hash mark to the short side of the field, that's where you're going to have. That's where you're going to find your success is in this this condensed package. As you can see, we're just bombing it up easy, short side. Next up, we're going to do cover. Where are we at here? Let's do cover four. Against cover four, just fade that X route, and the B route here is just going to make the, the, you know, he's just going to get over the top of this safety. As I don't know why the safety kind of shot inside, but the outside cornerback and safety on the other side are going to be covering the A route. They're going to they're gonna bend to that. So, you know, you'll get plenty of separation here. There, uh, pressure got to me. Go ahead, we'll do that one more time. I don't think where you are in the field matters when it comes to this, but I am running it from the, short, the hash mark to the open side again. And then you can see how, like I said, he just gets inside release and the, um, the strong safety just reacts to the lower route. Next up, we got the PA boot comeback. This is a good man coverage play. The zig and the tight end are both good man beaters. You can see I canceled the play action post snap with the art with the right trigger. I find it's best to leave the play action and just cancel it. You don't want to let the full play action go through though, because a lot of times it can really get you into into trouble. Although there it didn't really seem to have too much of an issue, so it's really up to you. But all three of these routes are man beating routes, including the zig would probably be the first read, the tight end would be the second read, and the comeback would be the third read. Next up, we got the PA post shot post. Go and we'll pick cover four. So I run from a hash mark to the short side of the field, put the A route on a curl, and then put the B route on a fade. And the X route here will get open over the top of the um, the strong safety for an easy one play touchdown if you get a little bit of a better throw. Go and we'll do that one more time. So it does take a little while for that develop for that uh, route to develop. But once it does, you can see he gets easily passed, even though there that was slightly overthrown. A little bit of a faster receiver probably would have been an easy one-play touchdown, but you can see it gets over the top. Next up, out of the I-form slot, we have the stretch alert bubble. So whether you throw into the bubble screen or the stretch play, they're both going to be best against cover three and cover four because the cornerbacks drop back. If you're going to throw to the bubble screen, or if you're going to run the stretch, I mean, <laughs> it's best to motion this guy out because it makes the cornerback drop back. Here you can see it shifts alignment, but it just gives me a better opportunity to get to the edge. Although the tight end didn't really block that guy there. Next up, we have the strong stretch. It's going to be best against cover three and cover four zones. This play can really work against anything. You just want to make sure you're going in the direction where you have outside containment from your tight end to their box defender. So here Goddard does have outside opportunity, even though he gets outside of it there. You can see that's still going to create the lane that I need, whether he gets outside of it or not. If he gets outside, I got to go inside. If he doesn't, I can go outside. Here's another good opportunity. I got to hope that this fullback can get out to the point where he takes away that cornerback. I can give myself a motion if I want to, although I feel like that can give away the play a little bit, but based off of some of the pass plays, which is also going to utilize that motion, it really doesn't. So it's really all just making sure that you have outside containment. And like I said, you do have some options. If you try to motion the fullback in the other direction, though, you can see it's a completely different motion, so it doesn't really work out the same way. It's not really the way that I want to go. Um, it really only works to the short side. And you can see how you can have success with this. I mean, it's a very uh, stout run play with a lot of size 
basically three tight ends because most teams don't even have a fullback on the roster anymore. Next up, we got the inside zone. This play here, it's probably best to flip and run opposite the the receiver tight end because you can see a bunch of defenders are bunched up over there. It's probably best to run it to the shallow side. It's just a good inside run. At the end of the day, it's not an explosive run regardless to either direction. I just find it makes the most sense to try to run away, away from the most of the defenders. As you can see on the next play, we get a very big play because of that. You can run it in the direction of the extra blocking, but to me, it's best to run it away from the extra defenders. Here's an opportunity for the slightly bigger hole to run it in that direction again, and you can see we get a very big, uh, very big hole. So very good inside run, has explosive capabilities depending on what you're looking at on defense. Next up, we got the PA cross. This play really works against any defense. All you have to do is put the X route on a streak. You can motion them in to try to get these crossing receivers open a little bit faster, but at the end of the day, all you really want to do is pull back any outside zone so you can get these, uh, these underneath routes open below it. You're really just going to work front to back, A route to B route. The A route should be there all the time unless it's like a hard flat like right here. And then the B route you can see is just a deep crosser that typically will beat uh, most zones, most mans, just about anything. Both routes really should beat man or zone depending on what you're looking at. Next up we have the PA sale. Start off with Tampa 2. All you have to do is put the X route here on a 10 yard out route against cover 2 zone. And the B route here will have a very big opening right up the middle just as long as you time that pretty well. I don't know if I'll get a one play touchdown but you can see the opportunities there especially if you have a little bit more speed than Smith has in 91. Against cover 2 man. Just put the X route on a 10 yard out route and you'll have the exact same opportunity just as long as the B route doesn't get bumped too much. You can see he gets right up the middle there for a big play. Uh, but he got bumped around quite a bit. You need, might need a stronger receiver. So here, here he gets off pretty clean. You can see we get a much better uh, look. And we're getting a very easy one play touchdown because he didn't get bumped around too much by the defender. Against cover three, against cover three, you just gotta put the X route on a comeback and the A route on a streak. That's gonna be the really only difference. Play action to me is critical. And you can see how, once again, that comeback route pulls that cornerback down to the point where you just have to wait for the receiver to cross the free safety's face. Bullet pass lead away, get a very big play. Same thing can be said about cover four. We're gonna pick cover four drop. Just put the X route on a comeback route and then the A route on a streak. That's all you really have to do. If you motion in this comeback route, it is helpful as it will pull the uh, the safety down so that this guy can get over the top, making it a very easy one play touchdown. But you do need a pretty fast receiver to do this against cover four. Next up out of the I form Z close, we have the wide receiver curl. This is specifically a man beating play. It's gonna work best if you run from a hash mark to the open side of the field. And, uh, you know, basically I'm gonna be thrown to the B route. I mean, that's really the look. Once he gets outside, it's a speed out route. It's gonna get open against pretty much any man coverage. It doesn't really matter, especially if you throw with timing. The X route on the other side, I mean, you can put it on a slant, you can put it on a drag, you can put it on anything you want. I don't really find that that's uh, gonna be too, you know, a drag would probably get open against just about anything. So the B route would be the read. The A route's also a pretty good man beater if he gets across the middle with a little less contact. But at the end of the day, this is, if you're going this play, it's really because you wanted that man beating speed out route that Six is running. Next up, we have the inside zone weak. It's a really good play. You can flip this with the right stick and have success with it, but we, we really want to find the gap. So here we have a big gap on the left side. We're just going to go ahead and take that, and that lead blocker is really um, a really good option. Uh, like I said, he comes across the formation here, but if you see a gap on the other side, you can flip the play, keep it to that side, and you're still going to have very successful runs. This is one of the better run plays in the playbook and maybe even in the game. I've heard some people say that they think this is the meta. Some very respectable man community members say that they think this is a meta run play. And I've been using this since last year. You can see right there, but we get a very big play. It's a very good running scheme in general. So definitely a good option. Next up, we got the motion zone split. This is a good play. It just really plays off of the fake motion. And it's a good inside handoff as you'll typically find space. I think it'll, you'll find space typically to the left side, even though the diagram really looks like it's going to the right side. I think because the, the tight end comes across to the left side, you typically want to follow him. Although there, uh, 94 just shot right through. I don't know if that's JJ Watt or what. But, uh, but that's pretty much going to be my read, is following the motion and following the, the blocking tight end. You can see we get much more space to the left side. I really feel like the space is going to be to the right side. So this is something we're going to want to follow that jet stream of motioning players into the alley 
and it'll give you the best opportunity for a big run right there. You see the the, the receiver that was in the fake got down the field and was blocking a cornerback or safety or whoever, making this play that much more productive because he will eventually turn to a blocker. So like I said, follow that alley. Let's go right up that hole there. And you can see the receivers didn't do a great job blocking down there. I probably would have sprung it for a very big run. But follow that lane, you get a very big play. Next up, we got the PA boot. A little random. It's a good play as is. I mean, the RB route's a good man beater. The underneath route's a good zone beater. You're really just going front to back. I don't know what happened there. I guess I had some pressure on my face. You want to typically cancel um, the uh, the play action, like pre-snap. Um, but you're really just going front to back. It's really that simple. It's not really a lot more to it. Uh, because of all the run plays in this formation, your opponent will typically... I can cancel that after the fact, too. Your opponent will typically... Oh, wow. I really fell for that, but I still caught it. <laughs> you, your opponent will typically um, not be expecting this route. Like, the, the user can take this away, but because of all the misdirection, all the angles, and all the weird stuff going on, typically they won't have, um, you know, any, any real reads... Uh, they won't be waiting in the middle of the field for this because of all the run plays being so so hard to stop. I motioned in this guy here. I like to do that sometimes as well just because I feel it pulls back the coverage for the middle receivers a little bit quicker. But you can see, like I said, that RB route there is just coming right across over the middle. So you're really starting from front to back. Next up, we got the PA pin deep. Go cover zero. So I'm just going to block the fullback and put the A route on a zig. And all these routes would be man coverage. I want to cancel the play action as quick as possible because this is going to be something where I'm going to have to make a quick throw. But you can see how that route there absolutely destroys man zero. You can motion this guy in too because obviously, you know, the space to the outside is going to be important for his route. And you can't go through the fa full fake handoff. you got to cancel it with the right trigger. But you can see how these routes get open very quickly. If you block both running backs, which you can do, the X route will still get open, but it, if you need to block both the running backs, the zig and the X route will still get open, but you'll notice that the B route will be a little bit more difficult. It changes the coverage assignments, and you get a lot of double teams out there, so it really can't block the running back. That's something that you really have to keep, but like I said, you got you to gotta get rid of this... Um, you gotta get rid of that play action. You gotta cancel that play action or else you'll get sacked a lot of times. So this is definitely the best man beating play in the formation. And you really have a lot, with the zig and everything, you really have a lot of quick man beating options. Next up we have the RPO reflat wheel. This play here, if it's a zone coverage, you wanna throw it to the B route right away. And you'll know based off of the fact that they're not really um, nobody motions across. The motion, if you see a motion across happen and um, it turns into a, uh, if somebody follows, then you know it's a man coverage. So right here, it's a man coverage. This is going to be best case scenario to keep with the quarterback if it's a man coverage because nobody's assigned to the quarterback in man coverages. So that's going to be your best bet there. You can also just hand it off though, uh, which is going to be an option. Like here, once you've know, got that zone coverage, just get it out there. Uh, and you can see it's going to be, you know, you just zip it out there, bullet pass it out there, and you can see you get a very big play. But you do have the option to run it. I haven't really seen the opportunity for that yet. Like I said, here it's going to be a zone. I can go ahead and I can just take the hand off if I want to. Those are pretty much the three options that work the best. Although, again, zone coverage, you can also throw it to the uh, the full or the, the fullback slash tight end. The RB route is a good option. So here's a man coverage. This is not a good option to do that. But you can see there, I even get like a pitch animation, which is, which is pretty cool, um, which is something that... Uh, you don't typically get, but uh, that's something where, like I said, that almost treats it like a triple option play with a, with a really elongated pitch. So that's something that else you could do. We're going to do that again. I don't plan on really getting that, uh, that pitch animation too often. Like I said, you don't want to do it. You want to do, this is another thing. You want to do it with a zone coverage. As you can see, the man coverage defender is right there, but that pitch really does kick this, uh, the glitchiness of this up a notch. Hopefully I get some zone coverages here so I could, I could do that pitch. And like I said, it's, you're not getting a ton, but if you have a fast guy there, that's definitely a good play as well. So you really have four options on this play. Next up, we got the halfback wham. It's a good inside run. It's probably best against cover two man and zone because the safety's dropped back pre or post snap. And you can see how it's just like a trap run and it's, it's a really quick uh, motion for the blocker. So it won't give your opponent any time to really set up any, you know, adjustments to make, uh, you know, some take, take a long time to motion across and it'll give your opponent time to make some adjustments. This won't do that. Next up out of the single back bunch, we have the PA fork shot. Start off with Tampa two. 
You got a couple different options here. One of the easier ones is to just put the B route on a streak, and the A route here will be a very big play once he gets off the uh, off all the zones. He's kind of getting jammed there, so that's one option that works really well against cover two. You can also split the field with the B route, but I find it works best to motion him in or motion him out to the line like this. And you'll see how he'll do a better job of crossing the safeties than if he were where he was. There's a couple adjustments you can make to make this version better too. You can put the X route on a 10 yard out route. Go on, we'll do that one more time. Motion this guy out, 10 yard out route. Cancel the play action. I'm gonna roll away from that dude who just keeps getting in my face. And you can see how we can split those safeties. A little less pressure and I could definitely split the safeties for a one play touchdown. Next up at a single back bunch base, we have the halfback slash. This is a very good inside run. It's essentially an inside zone uh, that you're running in the direction of the bunch. Um, it's not as effective as an inside zone, but it is a good uh, good run play. One of the better run plays in this formation. You can see right there, that was like you know a, a way more effective run than the first run. You can flip this with the right stick because you are under center, but typically it doesn't help. It's better to run it in the direction where you have at least two tight ends blocking, which is what makes this a very uh, a very good run formation as you do have that additional strength in the run game. Next up, we have the quick pitch. It's a good run play. Sometimes I'd like to motion this guy out just to pull the defender out a little bit, uh, spread the defense out a little bit. That's really the only option that you would really need to use. Um, this is not one of my favorite run plays. I might not have a ton of success running this, but it's a pro favorite run play uh, because a lot of people like to run these bunch sets. I don't really run a ton of bunch sets personally, um, but you can see it's one of the better outside runs you can have from this formation. Next up, we have the Seattle. Okay, break. Typically, I'm just going to put the X route on a drag and motion out the B route. This is going to be the best play. Against cover two man, you can put the RB route on a streak. I'm sorry, against cover two, not cover two man. Against cover two zone, that will give you a much better option when it comes to throwing to this B route over the top because essentially the streak is going to pull the safety in and the, and the drag will pull the or pull the cornerback down eventually. I mean, you could really do a couple different things here. If I wanted to work that route a little bit quicker, I could do the exact same setup and just basically put the RB route on like an out route. I could do something like this to give myself a much quicker result when it comes to pulling that cornerback down because that felt like I was waiting a little while. And if I do that, you can see I get a very easy one play touchdown as I get a big catch and run. But I find the first setup probably gives you the most options. Against cover to man coverage, we'll do that again. Pretty much going to be the same thing, only this time you don't really have to do anything. You just put one of these guys on a streak. I mean, the RB route here, I can put like a drag or something like that. This here is going to be a much better check down, and then you'll see how this cornerback here, the receiver really just runs around him. It's a pressing formation, but based off the fact that he takes such a wide looping angle, I'll go to the replay whenever it comes up, rather. I'll go to the replay to show you guys that essentially it just doesn't get pressed. So here we go one more time. Like I said, he tries to put hands on him, but he just runs around him. And that's what you're going to get pretty much every single time as he beats him to the corner. Next up, we have the Z spot. Okay, ready? It's another play that I really work against just about anything. You just have to put the B route on a streak. And all I'm really going to do is read the A route to the RB route. Um, I can really put this other guy here on like a slant or something like that, whatever type of check down I want. But if the RB route's open, I'll take it right away. I mean, that's a man coverage, but he's leading out. I'll take that, get a nice catch and run. No questions asked. That should be just about any man or zone, depending on the alignment pre-snap. But it's really more of a zone-beating uh, concept. As you can see right here, that looked like a man. He actually got out in front of it. Didn't quite get, uh, you know, that, that's not typically what I want to throw it against. I don't typically want to throw it against man. Only if I get the head start will I want to do that. Not a lot of times can happen if they're like running into people. Like here we get that that once again. Looks like it might have been a hard flat because he did react pretty quickly. But like I said, I'm starting by looking at that guy. Typically this concept works best against cover two zone though because the A route shoots right for that uh, spacing. So you can see right there, very easy play. You can easily get a one play touchdown if you have a fast enough tight end like a Darren Waller or something like that. Next up we have the bench. This play here, uh, there's a really good man beating route 
on both the X and the B route. This looks like a man based on the fact that these cornerbacks are in so far. So if you throw in the break, you can have some very good success against man coverage. The best setup for a play like this, though, is pick a side, put one of the tight ends on a streak, and then put the other tight end on a drag. It really doesn't matter which direction you go, but I do feel like the B route is probably the best against man. The best against zone is probably going to be the X route, which is a slightly different look. We have a zone coverage here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll block my running back, although that's fine. You can leave him in that. That's fine. That's a good play as well. That was a cover three. You can see if it's a cover three, the streak's going to be the we're going to be the read. Typically, that's not meant to do anything more than just pull coverage back, but on this particular play, if it's a cover three, he'll be the read. If it's a cover two or any man coverage is anything like that like this year we have a man coverage so i'm not even gonna mess around i'm just gonna go ahead and throw it up to Devonte smith although he didn't really beat that coverage too well uh you can see how that's a very good man beating uh, but i don't know why they keep bringing all these safeties down that's why i kind of forced that the a route though is a very good check down you can see here we get a man coverage once again i didn't feel like waiting for the deeper route to develop so i just take the man coverage so it's really that simple if you get a cover two though which i haven't really gotten that's going to be a play where you read the a route versus the x route I don't know. It looks like I have a cover three here. Like I said, I can get that X route. Even against cover three, you can see that beats it outside. I don't think that was a man coverage. That's just a very good uh, corner route for pretty much any man or zone. Let's go and do it one more time. I'm hoping to get a cover two here. Let's see if we get that outside route again, and we're just basically you know, lobbing it up and, and making a very good play. I had to manually select a cover two just so I could get that look. But you'll see how the X route here just splits the safety in the cornerback uh, once the drag gets across the field. But wow, really, that route, that X route really beats anything. Next up, we have the counter weak. This is a good run play of this formation. It typically works best against like spread defensive looks or if your opponent comes out in smaller packages. It's also a good cover three, cover four play, but you can see, I mean, every single time I'm having success here as it's just the way the blocking sets up. It's a very good run play from this formation. It's also something that'll keep your opponent off guard because there's really not a lot of... Um, you know, the, the, it's almost like a fake because most run plays from this are usually the halfback wham or the stretch. This is just a really good fake because it looks like it's going in one direction and then you end up going back in the other direction. So a very good misdirection play. Next up, we get the halfback stretch. So another play, you can really go in either direction with the right stick. It's going to give you a lot of success. If you want to bring an additional blocker, but at the same time kind of give away what direction you're going, you can motion across one of these tight ends. You can see it also brings a defender with it. So this is not necessarily my preferred way, but sometimes it's better to have additional blocking. As you can see right there, we had a pretty good run. I like to run it as is. I like to mix in this motion because I do have a lot of plays where I motion out this uh, this, rece or this receiver. A lot of one play touchdowns. Uh, typically though, if I'm going to do that, I want to motion it away from the run play because I want my opponent to think that's the direction I'm going. And then this is going to be a much better angle that will catch my opponent off guard and make it a lot easier to run. Next up, we got the PA boot slide. It's another play where I'm just going to put the A route on a streak. Uh, and block my running back. This is pretty much all I got to do. The A route's going to pull everything back, and then I'm pretty much just going to play the crosser, which here is going to be my check down as well as my man beater. Then I'm going to play the, the the corner receiver and the running back, which is pretty much going to be all my reads. I don't really make a read with the A route, but at the end of the day, here, uh, when I meant running back, what I meant to say was uh, the the crossing Y route. That's typically like a running back's route, but it's actually a tight end. So I can see there that was his zone coverage, and we really just played the high low routes across one another as you can see right here I mean, that's a man coverage i can just basically that's all i could do i mean i was under pressure right away next up we have the switch against cover two you can either motion out the tight end or you can just put the running back on a wheel route and motion him to the sideline uh, i find that this play here pretty much is going to have success whether you want to throw to the receiver over the middle or whoever's in the wheel route as they're both going to get open i find that since the tight end on your team is typically not as fast as the running back it's best just to block the tight end motion the running back out you'll see how in this play the running back's probably going to be a much more explosive option as once he gets you know level with the cornerback just bullet and pass lead to the sideline because the cornerback doesn't turn around if we watch the uh, the receiver here, you can see once he gets to this point, that's when you make your pass because the cornerback won't be able to flip his hips and you know make a play. So basically when he's even, he's leaving. Against cover three, slightly different setup, but it's pretty much gonna be the same thing. You can motion this guy out or you can motion out uh, the running back. Find the running back once again does a slightly better job. As you can see, you know, this guy here is just going to get open in the seam. It's really a seam play against cover three. But like I said, I like the running back variation. So we'll do that one more time. It's going to be pretty similar. You see how it just creates separation and then you can hit him up the seam. Maybe if you got a fast enough receiver, maybe you can get going for a one play touchdown. 
Full setup would look something like this. Come back around on the left, streak the wire out. This can give you an opportunity to possibly get a one play touchdown, but at the end of the day, like I said, it's probably not gonna happen because you're not gonna get through that seam. Next up, we have the close PA cross. Start off with Tampa 2 as we always do. This play is a natural one play touchdown against cover two. You just have to buy a little bit of time and wait for the X route here to get uh, you know inside the free safety because the strong safety drops. Since there's no real route pulling back the strong safety, you can see how he will lag behind and the, this receiver just basically just streaks right past him. So you just have the bullet and pass lead inside away from the free safety. Next up, we'll do cover two man. This play needs no setup against cover two man either, but the receiver can take a little bit longer based off of the fact that the um, the uh, the cornerback is pressing, is jamming, so it might take him a second to get off that jam. But you can see it's the exact same reaction to the safety's deep. Next up we have cover three. So we're just gonna block our drag tight end, unless you want that check down because it'll probably come more in handy. This is a very tough cover three one play bomb, but you can bomb up cover three if you have enough time. So I'm gonna put the B round to come back, put the Y round to streak and block my two tight ends. I'll also slide my protection. I'm also gonna go as far as double teaming JJ Watt because he'll probably be the, the reason that this play doesn't work if it doesn't work. Like I said, rolling out is gonna be best. And now you can see you can get a one play touchdown against this against cover three. But at the end of the day, like I said, you really need a mobile quarterback or a very good pass protection to get it done. Next up we'll do cover one hole. So I'm going to put the A route on a streak and the crossing tight end and running back are typically going to be the best throws here. Um, that's pretty much going to be your best bet. You, you can try for the crossing route, but you probably won't have enough time. If you do have enough time, though, the X route will eventually get open with the streaking tight end. It's just an issue to, to buy this much time in the pocket. So if you have you know good blocking or a mobile quarterback and you make it happen, that route will get open. Next up, we'll do cover for quarters. Against cover four quarters, you're gonna need a bigger speed advantage. You're also gonna need more room on the field because I think that one of the best ways to beat this is by lob passing it. So that's gonna be your best bet, but it does get behind the cover four free safety if you have a little bit of a speed advantage. Next up, we'll do cover four drop. Once again, this is a no adjustments, won't play touchdown. You just have to wait for the X route um, to get inside the safety there. You can see he gets over the top of the strong safety and then you just have to make a bullet pass lead away. And it's a very easy one play touchdown against cover four as well. Next up, we have the close PA sale. We're gonna go. We're gonna start off with cover two first. We'll go. We'll go to the nickel package for that. Tampa two. It's a very easy cover two bomb. You just have to put the X route here on a ten yard out route. That's a five yard out route. Then you smart route it. Put the RB route on a streak. The A route you can just block. I don't really need him doing that. You can block the running back too, but that's probably your best option for a check down. Then the B route here will get right up the center between the two safeties. Once he gets inside the safe, the strong safety, basically just bullet and pass lead up. Or you can lob it, it really doesn't matter. But it's very easy one play touchdown against cover two. Next up, we'll do cover two man. Same setup. The uh, the B route here is inside the cover two cornerback, so he can't really get that relief, that press that he wants. And then it'll just basically just be gone right up the middle once again. So just make sure you have your fastest guy here. Very easy. We'll play touchdown against cover two man as well. Next up, we'll pick cover three. This set's going to be pretty similar. You got to put the A route on a streak and then the X route on a comeback route. The running back you can block, but this is going to be the look. So the B route here, once again, is going to get across the safety. As you can see right there, I just, you know, need a little bit of time. I don't get the best throw. But, you know, you can't run this the exact same way. You can't put the RB route on a streak because the safety won't be occupied. You need the cornerback to be occupied so that you can occupy the safety with the streak. So this is the only real setup. We'll do that again. Uh, the B route here, like I said, I just have to kind of wait for him to get inside of that safety. Bullet, pass lead away. And I guess I'm just not throwing the ball very good, but you can see he's passing it. You can also see that the cornerback is nowhere near to be found on the on the X route. He's gonna bite on that on that comeback route. So let's go. Let's do this one more time. I'm trying to get a completion and I'm not getting it. Oh, we did get it there. Boom. So you can see it's an easy one. Play touchdown against cover three. Next up, we'll pick cover one hole. Against cover one man, you can put the X route on a slant. You can put the A route on a streak to pull back coverage. Uh, it's really up to you if you want that RB route, which is a decent check down depending on um, you know who you have running it. Like here, I mean, I don't really have a, a good receiving tight end, but if you don't want to lose that, you can always put the A route on the streak. Next up, we'll pick cover four quarters. The setup for cover four quarters is going to be the same with the exception of you don't streak the RB route. You want to leave the RB route doing what he's doing. It's going to give you just a little bit of an inside lead, uh, and then you can make a big play. There I threw the ball a little bit early. Go ahead and I'll do that again. I'll block my tight end, and I'll slide my pass for tight end. I give my tight end a little bit of help. Uh, but you can see, I mean, this guy here can get past 
uh, the re, uh, the cornerback there, or the safety rather, whose coverage um, is not going to be good enough. Once again, we need a pretty fast receiver to get this done or a very good route running advantage. Next up, we will pick cover four. We'll have to go to the dime package for that. Go cover four drop. Now, this can be a one play touchdown against cover four, but unless you have a really fast receiver, a huge speed advantage, it's not necessarily going to work. Uh, pretty similar setup to the cover three. Streak the RB route, put the X route on a comeback. Then you want to put the uh, the Y route on a curl. I'm sorry, not a curl, a wheel route. That's going to occupy that safety. And then, like I said, if you have a fast enough receiver, you can get inside of the, the strong safety and over the top of the free safety because the free safety bites on the wheel route. Next up, we got the inside zone. It's another good run play, but since your opponent will typically be shifting or paying more attention to the two tight end side, you could really just hit him to the other side with this play, and you can see how it's going to be a good inside run, a good counter. You can really treat this like a weak side stretch, although if you have a safety coming down the box like that, you could always flip it and go the opposite direction and still have a lot of success with it there. I didn't quite get through that hole. There was definitely a hole there. I could have got a bigger run. It is what it is. At the end of the day, you could always motion across one of these tight ends and stuff like that, or you could just flip the play entirely and just try to take it wide. You can see the two tight end sides going to give you a lot of extra blocking and that was my most successful run next up we got the pa boot left tackle this play once again you have a good man beater in the a route and then you have the comeback route which is going to be your check down we're really going to try to throw the tight end every single time we call this play next up out of the wing pair we have the halfback inside zone Let's go now. this is your inside run uh, whether you want to flip it, because here we have a much bigger uh, hole to the right side, or you just want to run it to the left, because typically this formation will pull everybody um, in one direction. You can see right here, even that that uh, cornerback, or that, I'm not sure if it's a cornerback or safety, but he kind of played down outside. If it's a cover three, he's typically going to leave that spot. So right here, this is a perfect opportunity just to take this in the opposite direction, although he did a really good job of stopping me there. This is your best inside run in the formation. You can flip it with the right stick and really run in either direction you want to go. But you can see typically the direction of design is going to be best. It's just a good uh, run to keep your opponents uh, balanced because the best run is going to be the outside run from this formation. But a lot of times you'll notice that that guard will double team and then get to the next level. And that's typically going to be your read. Now right here there's a guy waiting back there at safety. So I'll flip it. I'll go towards this hole, make him chase me, and I can still have a better chance for a good inside run. Next up we have the PA sprint halfback flat. This is similar to the previous play I showed in a different formation where I'm going to want to motion this guy in so he gets across the line quicker. And then I want to put either the RB route or the B route on a streak. It really doesn't matter which one, but I think the B route's probably best. Your man beater is going to be the X route. He'll cross the field faster now because I motioned him in. And then your zone beater is going to be the Y route and the A route. But it's really going to be three levels of passing, which is going to be really, really what makes this so good. You can see here that looks like a zone coverage. Tight end gets outside of it. The running back in the flats also a very good option, although there I just took the deeper one. Here we have another, you know, all our man blitz. I might not really go this route against a man blitz, but I know already that's pretty much just going to be the A route here, which is another good man beater once again, or the crossing receiver, which is really going to be your best two options against man. The tight end should really be the RB route tight end should really get open against just about anything. It's not the RB route tight end, I'm sorry. It's the uh, the A route tight end should get open against just about anything, just as long as you throw it on timing. Like there, that was a cross body throw. Didn't really do the best job. But it's still going to be one of the best routes. I also didn't, you know, motion in my uh, my check down, which is really going to be important. Except we got the PA tight end seam. It's another play where all I'm going to do is put the B route here on a drag, and we're pretty much going to be reading the high low routes going across the field. Uh, that's pretty much it. Your comeback route is going to be a good check down. It'll be man or zone. But typically, if I call this play, it's to play off of all the running plays in this formation. I'm really going to hit the B route or the A route. And that's pretty much all I'm going to need to read for the most part, unless the user is Johnny on the spot. You can see right there. I mean, there's nothing really there. Like I said, if you're if you're running the ball successfully, your opponent will have to bite down on the play action on the run plays. Next up, we have the PA X burst cross. This play here is an easy setup. I'm just going to put the B route on a drag. That's all I really got to do. And my crossers are going to be the play. If it's a man coverage, you'll see how the running back really doesn't get open. But the, the two crossing tight ends typically beat man coverage. The running back's really only going to beat zone. You can always put the B route on like an in route too if you find that they're colliding or getting too close together. But when you throw it to the running back, a lot of times that tight end crossing will turn into a blocker. So that's one of the reasons you want that there. So really easy read. You have your, your B and your A route should be just about anything, man or zone. Uh, like right here, we're just basically playing a levels game as the deep route gets forgotten in the crossers. It looks like it might have been a cover two. And you can see we're just basically working our way from front to back. Really easy read, though. If it's zone coverage, it's going to be the running back. If it's man coverage, it can only be the tight end or the, 
or one of the two tight ends. Next up, we got the stretch alert looky. This play here, as long as nobody drops into the lane, you could always throw it to this guy. It's going to be best against man coverage for sure. And this is really a red zone play based off of the, the slant itself. But you also have the option to, to run to this guy here, which is going to be best against cover three and cover four zones because the cornerbacks drop back post snap. Next up out of the wing pair, we have the stretch wide receiver screen. The stretch run and the screen are typically going to be best against uh, cover three off zones, like cover three, cover four, where the cornerbacks drop back post snap. So this is pretty much a play you only want to call in those scenarios if your opponent's running those style of defenses because you can see the cornerbacks dropping back really give no outside containment when it comes to this run play or this pass play. Next up, we got the tight end attack. This is a very popular play. It was a meta play uh, in Madden 22. So I'm including it here, even though I never really used that play much there. And I'm not really going to use it too much in Madden 23. Uh, it's a very good play, though. The running back is one of the better options. Um, I don't know why he decided to run the route in the direction that he did. I mean, you can always put him on an out route in the other direction. I find that that's uh, a little bit more effective. But the A route crossing the tight end, I know, is a very good play. Um, there's definitely a lot of throwing angles to the three tight ends on the side um, that you can always take advantage of. Like right here, you can see that uh, the tight end just slips right behind the zone, and you can have a lot of success there. And that, a large portion of that is because of this tight end pulling the routes. You can motion him out, too, to basically create more space for that. Here, it looks like we have an all-out man blitz. Um, which I typically wouldn't recommend running that too. But the A route here is a very good route, even though, you know, that whole play, I probably wouldn't run that against Man Blitz at all, to be honest with you, because you can see there's just so much going on there. But you can motion out this B route here, have a lot of success with that, and then you can see how that A route really clears the crossing route for the tight end, even though I have, a, I have probably my worst tight end running the second most important route. Next up, we have the four verticals. I'm going to go ahead, we're going to pick cover three, Sky. I'm going to put the B route in a fade, put the X route in a comeback, and then we're going to motion out this tight end that's all we really have to do and the b route here is going to be a very easy one play touchdown just as long as he doesn't get too wide to where the cornerback is as you can see right here all we have to do is bullet pass lead maybe free form a little bit away from the safety it's a very easy one play touchdown against cover three you can also have success against cover two we're going to pick tampa two this play is a natural cover two play but you can make it better by motioning this guy out and just keeping it consistent the uh, the wheel route on the tight end side will get open, but you typically don't have the same athlete that you have on the other side of the field with the receiver. So you really can go to either side. If you want to throw to a guy that can score, though, the X route is a much better option. As you can see, we can bullet pass lead to the boundary and we can get a very easy one play touchdown because the option route really does pull the safety in quite a bit. Next up, we have the inside cross. We'll run it against random. A lot of times the user will follow these drags out of the middle of the field and it'll leave the comeback route over the middle of the field open. The computer won't do that the same way, but that's something that you can expect from your user opponent. So you're really just working the drags, and then you obviously have um, the comeback right over the middle of the field if your opponent follows one of the drags, which really can be the better play of the two. Even here, like that's a man coverage, still beats that. So that's something that you should always have an eye on, as those are really the two main reads. A lot of people like to throw to the running back too, which is something that I'm not really all about. As you can see right here, that's to me the running back's not part of the read structure, but a lot of people like to throw to the running back in this round. I think it probably works better against zone. It's just not something that I personally do. As you can see right there, you can back shoulder and stuff like that to get that running back open, but that's not really my personal preference. Next up, we got the PA fork. It's another good play with multiple man beating routes. The running back will beat zone, but the best plays are going to be the B route here, which will beat to the outside. That'll beat any man cover. Just make sure you're running from a boundary. You have multiple man beating routes here. The B route is probably the best. I'll cancel my play action just to get that out there a little quicker. This route here will beat to the sideline every single time. Just run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field. Against man coverage, the B route and the A route are going to get open uh, pretty easily. As you can see, they're both man beating routes. There had to throw it a little bit quickly though. So that route's a good route, but the B route is really the best route on this play. As you can see, that'll also beat man coverage and it'll do it where the user is typically not. The running back is a good check down against zone if it is a zone coverage as these other routes can also beat zone but at the end of the day they're better against man next up we have next up we have the pay cross flood start off with tampa two against cover two just put the rb route tight end on a 10 yard out route you can motion them out to create more separation, but if you don't want a giveaway or a tell, you can just run it as is. You can see how this receiver splits the safeties for an easy one-play touchdown. Next up, we'll do cover two man. Just put the RB route on a 10-yard out route. And the B route, if he gets past the jam, can beat cover two, but if he doesn't, 
the A route's going to get open every single time. Next up, pick the stretch alert bubble. Go ahead and pick cover three. So another play that's going to be best against cover three and cover four zones. If you can hold this ball and wait to throw it until that defender comes inside to react to the stretch run, you'll get a bigger catch and run than if you throw it out instantly because he's not really, you know, he didn't really react yet. So if you're going to throw it to the stretch, or to the bubble screen, you have to hold it as long as possible. But the run play is also a decent run against cover three. I mean, I'm obviously running to the short side of the field. You typically want to, whatever play you're going to go to, you want to do it on the open side of the field so you have more space. But like I said, this year, if I can hold this as long as possible, I can get a better result uh, based off of the fact that the cornerback drifts in further to the line of scrimmage. Next up, we have the zone alert bubble. We'll go random on defense. Against cover two man and zone, the zone play, the zone runs can be best, but against cover three and cover four, the wheel or the bubble screen will be best. But you really just have to watch the cornerback. Like right there, he goes after the receiver, meaning it's a man coverage, so I have to hand it off. But you definitely want to watch the uh, the cornerback, like right here. He comes in. We could throw it out. It might have been a man coverage. might have been a man blitz with the cornerback. But that's really the easiest way to read this play is just watch that cornerback in front, as you can see right there. Like I said, the result of the run play doesn't really matter. It would be a pick six if I make it a poor read and throw it to the wheel route or the, uh, the bubble screen on a play like that, which isn't, you know, obviously it's better to take a, a handoff for a loss than forcing it out. To say we're getting a lot of looks where the where they're actually following that receiver, so I have to hand it off every single time. Next up, we have the halfback zone week. It's going to be your best inside run from the formation. I find running inside is probably a little bit better this year than running outside at the moment. So this is going to be a very important run. You can see right there. I uh, just want to be patient as you're going through the hole, um, and you'll typically get some pretty good uh, pretty good separation. This is going to be best off your opponent spreads the defensive line to try to stop the outside run. I uh, like the stretch run from this formation. Uh, anything else? You can see right here we have a big hole right at the middle. It's just going to be most successful inside run. Next up, we got the mesh. This player really works against just about any defense in the game. The drags are really key. The Y route is typically going to be the best drag out of the two because the running back will pull back any uh, zones in the area. Typically, like the roll in the direction of the Y route as well. A lot of times, it'll either get the user to follow or um, even better, it'll get the comeback route in the middle of the field open. Next up, we have the PA Flood. This is going to be a really good man beating play to the tight end. Typically, the tight end will beat man and the running back will beat zone. It's really that simple. There's not a lot of other really great options on this play, but the tight end and then the running back. Like I said, the tight end here is a really good option against man. Next up, we have the Sluggo Seam. This route is really designed to be a man cover one beater. I'm just going to put the B route here on a drag, give myself a check down, but you'll see the pump fake and the Sluggo route typically have a good combination of success. And it's typically a one play touchdown if you have a fast enough receiver. Next up, we got the counter weak. Go random. This is a good run play in the opposite direction. Typically, you have a lot of pulling blockers. Um, it feels like you have like three pulling blockers on this play, which is, you know, it's kind of an overload. So definitely a very good run play. Uh, as you can see, I mean, you just follow that tight end coming across, and he'll lead, the, he'll lead you to daylight for very big runs. Very good play. Best against spread formations. Uh, I'm just kind of choosing random here. But uh, there you can see if they're blitzing heavy, they can get through the gaps of the pulling blockers so that's something that uh, you don't want to run this against like mans or blitzes and stuff like that that might be your biggest issue if things are coming or flying in too quickly need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bits and more link in the description below